okay hello again so this time we will solve another alert from uh, this very nice platform let's defend uh, we will solve a very new alert uh, just just recently June 2 uh, Colina zero day detection okay so if you're not uh, up to date with the news this is just a recent zero day vulnerability uh, which made uh, headlines and now we will uh, we'll try to experience what it's re what it is but not, not really infect our machine but how to analyze and handle an alert with that detection okay without further ado let's let's take ownership of this case okay continue then of course when you take ownership uh have to create a case click continue and then you can now start the investigation or the playbook workflow okay start playbook so best practice best practice here open multiple tabs so you could check the details of the incident so notice here uh, the details so this is the source address uh, the host name the machine affected and notice here it has captured the file name file name of the weaponized document and even the file hash okay so of course when we have a file hash what what we do as uh, what we do to try age is we look it up first the virus total Notice this is a very malicious file, a trojanized file. Of course, it's, it has a Polina zero day vulnerability uh, exploit on it. Okay, and notice here, uh, just to answer the workflow question, we are asked to define the threat indicator, and we have the following choices unknown, unexpected, and outgoing internet traffic. Uh, malfunctioning AV, unexpected services, and just by looking at the virus total relations, we can actually answer it already because as you can see here, trying to contact malicious IP here or has multiple contacted IP address, uh, which is actually is our answer. Okay, so click next. Check if the malware is quarantined or clean. Okay, so indication uh, the malware is quarantined. Let's now check the endpoint security. And here, search the IP. And we can actually check the command history. So notice here, uh, we can see MSDT exe being killed, force killed. Notice here additional execution. Something seems to be copied. And I notice here the code dead, the code dead into a file and was expanded and then executed. Right? So we can see evidences of execution here. Uh, we can also see that in Actually, we can also see in the process list since it involves MSDT in the text. Eh? Uh, notice here we can see MSDT exe eh? execution with uh, encoded coded string here. So you could copy. Notice here you could copy here the base64 string uh, up to the this one and could actually decode it using CyberChef so I, I I did it already here notice we can see the actual commands being being run here notice here a hidden command prompt is being launched and then it kills the msdtd at exe and then launch another hidden command prompt here it changed directory to the users public then uh, it did an iteration for in the temp directory wherein it did a recursive copy of this file don't worry if you don't 
if you have no idea of the, what are these commands, you can actually Google them up and verify if what I'm saying to you now is correct or accurate. And then notice here it copy this file recursively and then it's, it's trying to find a string, this one, and it's dumping it to one.t file, then search util decode. Uh, actually try use for file download and showing the certificate info. And notice here it it the decoded file or the is trying to to transfer some info here in the one that C and it and then it expand expand is like decompressing. It decompresses the file and it executes executes a rgb.exe so notice here we, we have not seen any prevention or blocking action yet and just to verify uh, notice here uh, let's go back here we can see here the contacted ip address one of them uh, has a malicious hit malicious reputation we can also check uh, we can also check the lag management Okay, if you search it, notice here uh, the machine has outbound connections to this malicious IP, the one we found in VirusTotal. And notice here if you see the, if you expand the raw logs, you can actually see the domain for the proxy logs. The domain being contacted and when you search xmlformats.com it's pretty much the malware domain formats.com right let's see here it's a malware domain malware site pet mode infection source uh, blah 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 <laughs> okay so we can now answer this workflow uh, by doing those old investigations and we, we can say that it's not quarantine all right then we analyze malware we actually we could actually download the file here here and as best practice of course in malware handling uh, use uh, a separate virtual machine isolated virtual machine preferably a linux or my recommendation to use a remnox machine by linus Salser. Yeah, you can download the file here and you can unzip it. And after you unzip it, you can upload it to virus total here, uh, which is the same hash given here. It's actually the same hash. So just, just to show you that I have the same hash downloaded, you can run MD5 sum. Okay, notice here 529E52. It's the same one here. 529E52 is up to E52. Alright. So with that, you can actually say it's very malicious. And then check if someone requested the C2. Yeah, we already did that. We, yeah, it's shown here. It, it did access the malicious URL. The proxy logs. So we can say it's accessed. Then given that uh, the machine was indeed uh, compromised or infected, we can now contain the machine, right? Since we have this position that was infected, malicious and infected. So we can now go to endpoint security. Let's search the machine again. We can now contain the machine. All right, and once it's contained, okay, this, okay, and now put in the malware artifact, malware hash, Then of, I, I forgot, uh, in our investigation, actually, uh, your leads might ask you, how did, how did that weaponized file got into the victim's machine? 
So, of course, uh, we know that the common vector this is being delivered is through phishing email. So what we can do is we can search this file in the email logs. Okay, we can search the email logs here for the file and notice here we have one hit and we can actually see someone uh, posing as Ellie with this email address sends a phishing email to Jonas with a malicious attachment. Okay, and the way the based from the logs Jonas did download and executed the file. Thus we are seeing those connections and command history all right so we can actually add this email address as well to the IOC for blocking in the email exchange right or in the email gateway okay this is the phishing sender sender we can actually add the IP uh, remember actually I have here the file already so this is my write up so okay I'll just copy here so we can add okay we can add the IP address IP and we can also add the domain we can actually add the xmlformats.com well, okay so since there's no domain here just domain we can actually select email domain but there are other uh, other options we'll just choose domain only because this is the malware domain so best to block the whole domain since there are multiple urls and anyway that domain is really malicious okay Then we'll click next. Then the analysis notes uh, prepared here. So as, as investigated, Jonas received a phishing email, fell victim to it. Opens the attachment, uh, which fortunately contains Paulina zero day. Okay, and we notice from the logs, the evidence that it was not prevented. And it was successfully executed, okay? Click next and we're done. And now we can now, of course in the real world, you'll wait for it to be blocked in the perimeter tools, DR, other security tools before. Then clean, clean up the malware, malware artifacts, if any, on the machine, remaining malware artifacts, before you can close the alert. Okay, so indeed it is true positive. All right, congrats. Okay, uh, the, the beauty of less event is once it's closed, it will show you if your answers are correct. Okay, and it I'll even give you a point, points for each action, correct actions. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.